All right, Chunk, Chunk Podcast number two, and nobody heard anything about what we just we were just talking about before this. But this is the official start of the Chunk Podcast number two, and it just so happens to be on the night of the first round of the very drawn out and dragged out NFL draft, and uh, we are joined by JJ, Reginald, Bastion, and Jason Subadan. Am I saying that right, Subadan? Hey, hey, hey. Okay. Before we talk about football or sports in general, we should have done this on the NBA one, but we should probably just disclose who our favorite teams are, so people will know our bias and uh, and and don't, you know, so they can kind of weigh that into our opinion. So I will say I am a Green Bay Packers fan. Who they don't pick till fourteen, so as long as they pick a defensive back, I'm happy. I really don't care. So any uh, JJ, what about you? Who are you rooting for? Um, sadly, so sadly, I am a Jets fan. <laughs> Mm. Um, so this year there's uh, things to be excited about um, as they're picking at number three um, and they will without a doubt pick the not Hall of Fame quarterback um, Just Jeez, so much so much faith in your team JJ <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> they'll pick That's the one quarterback yeah the one quarterback that'll bust out of all, all of them that are in the beginning of the okay I'm all, excited. Over, all over the place I've always said it's a true fan if you if you're able to critique and criticize them, sure then you're actually a, celebrate them. All right, we'll move oh, it, yeah. move them on to you, Jason, because I'm pretty sure your team uh, has the next the, after the Jets. They're the next team in the lineup who has uh, a pick in this draft. So, who are you uh, rooting for here? So, my team is unfortunately the Bucks. And oh, damn, they're have, Bucks fan. Yes, <laughs> and that's sad. And, I have endured that pain since 2001, hmm. and uh, hey, they won a championship. A, it's You've been seen a, it. you know, 2002 was like the mountaintop, you yeah. know. <laughs> and uh, since then, I've only prayed that I've seen a defense as good as that team, and uh, that's, that's never gonna happen again. Yeah, I realize that, and you know, <laughs> you know, it's sad because last off season we we just like ramped up on the offense, and our defense came off a strong finish to the year, so I was excited for. You know, the season, and then we just drop the ball like the Bucks do. So, uh, yeah, let's hope that we can turn it around this draft. But I say that every year. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. They, well, I'm sure they're going to wind up doing Bucks things, but they pick at what number seven? They pick at number yeah. seven this Picking year. Picking at number seven. seven. Okay, That's and I'm a looking. Pretty good slot, though. Yeah, I'm looking at the uh, mock drafts. Uh, there's four different mock drafts from Mike Mayock, uh, Daniel Jeremiah, uh, Bucky Brooks. It's on NFL.com and and Char- Charlie Casterly, but they all unanimously picking. Derwin James out of Florida yes. State. Yes, yeah, I yes. I, I and, and which, and which, ironically, I am also a Florida State fan, and so seeing Derwin James play in person and seeing him and all of his highlights makes me super excited. But I am also annoyed because of the Bucks. We've also chosen safeties in the past, and we've shipped them away. So yeah. Good yeah, I'm really expecting a lot out of it. But they and pay. I think these, these mock drafts are always wrong too. Like they always have like there's always some crazy trade that happens or for sure something that you don't expect. So yeah, that's... I, I, I doubt they get Derwin James. Pretty much yeah, every let's team take that mock thing to heart. Every team has. Yeah. There's. A, I feel bad for the people who like literally. There's a website that I go to, who they make a full like seven round mock draft. I, and I, I was like, who has the time and patience for that? And when they know, it won't even be anywhere close to what's actually going to happen. <laughs> for real. Like, who, who even knows who's good in, like, the sixth round? Like, I know. you got to be an NFL. Savant. You should be NFL if you know who's going to be good in the sixth round. Yeah. Dude, I th- wasn't it, like, JJ or before we started rolling, we, he was saying, like, after 10, it's basically a wash because who knows what happens after it's that. It's a crap shoot. Yeah. yeah. After, after the first 10 picks, that's where teams start trading up, trading down. They start throwing away their draft picks, all just to try to meet their needs. So, well, speaking really, of, I would I would even go as far as to say the first five picks are certain. Yeah, speaking and then after of that, it, speaking it's, of, it's all over the place. Speaking of throwing away draft picks, uh, <laughs> Reggie Bastion, who is your favorite team again? I am a Dallas Cowboys fan. And <laughs> word on the street is that the Cowboys are going to trade up to the number one pick, right? And and draft. Uh, Johnny Football. So, <laughs> <We'll see>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was. I remember back then. I was hoping they would draft Johnny Manziel. I was like, yeah, we need fucking a successor to Romo. Uh, what yeah. do you mean? Uh, what do you mean? Uh, you have one of the greatest quarterbacks in Tony Romo. Are you kidding me? I've never get. I've never seen someone get injured so <laughs> much. <laughs> it was almost like a skill seeing just what he would hurt next. First of all, Romo. If he would have just won one Super Bowl, he'd be a Hall of Fame quarterback. So yeah. that's what I'm saying. He's yeah. He 
he's a monster. Be one, he was good. He's got to be one of the best undrafted <laughs> quarterbacks ever. He might be the best. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I would take Roma right now over Dak Prescott. Ooh. TB. Wow. I said, hey, I said it. You you really don't like your team. Yeah, <laughs> wow. You were like saying that. that. You were but saying Roma's that. Roma's a better quarterback. Let's be honest. He's a better thrower of the football. You were saying nice. that all Prescott's last season. Prescott's also just finished his second year. Give him time. I, let's, I refuse let's talk to about, give him time. Let's talk about, let's talk about, the, about the Browns in round one. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, they got Tyrod. Uh, as a presumably a bridge quarterback, um, they have two good receivers. They got Landry and Gordon. Like, if you can't pass the road, pass, you're done. <laughs> and they, they have the number four pick as well. So, really, you know, you got to figure that with their pick of whatever quarterback they want, they're going to take a quarterback. If it was me, if I was running the Browns, I would take Saquon Barkley number one, and then I would. Pick whoever was left at quarterback at number four. Like it's not, it's a crapshoot, anyways. Who the fuck knows is going to be good? Yeah, well, listen. <laughs> unless, <laughs> yeah, unless, yeah, Barkley is a sure thing. I think, yeah. I mean, if he's a young, he's like the best running back I think uh, to be evaluated since Reggie Bush. I think coming out of college, even though Bush wasn't that good of a pro, like he was nasty in college. Here's my thing: do. How much trust do you put in Tyrod Taylor to carry a franchise? I mean, not that much, but I think for a year or two. I mean, the Browns are going to win the Super Bowl next year, so I mean, you might as well just have a decent season. I still say they do take a quarterback and have someone that's being developed under Tyrod Taylor. And as soon as Tyrod drops the ball, which he may have a, he may have a, there might be a high possibility he drops the ball. And if he does, you want to have a good, solid quarterback who's been who's been developing underneath him. That way, you don't lose any momentum. The problem with the Browns is that they put all their eggs in one basket with a with a first round draft pick and then all hell breaks loose and he ends up sucking and then the team's gone for the year i mean yeah. that's just one of the thousands of problems the browns have i okay, think the so browns whoever they choose is gonna suck because the browns just have bad luck in the whole room. <laughs> right they're they're just slightly worse when it comes to draft luck but who do you who do you think they take as a quarterback then you got darnold who you know seems to be the top quarterback in the draft you got Mayfield, whose stats were better than Darnold's, um, but obviously there were there were some early concerns about his character. I have, no idea. I have no idea. I have no idea. I mean, I feel like the, I, don't, I don't know if anyone even knows who's really going to be good or better than like anybody else. I just wouldn't take Faker just because the off the field stuff. Like it's not worth a top number one pick if the dude's going to be out there partying and. Doing crazy shit, and then ESPN's gonna be all over his dick if he does anything, you know. So here's the, so here's the biggest thing I would say when it comes to the first round draft pick, or sorry, the the Browns pick. The, the one they have to take a quarterback. So we're basic, the talk, the conversation is basically Darnold versus Mayfield. My yeah. thing is, is that the Browns they need a traditional style. They need a traditional, a uh, somewhat traditional style quarterback because with Baker Mayfield. Even though his numbers are more impressive than Darnold, the issue is is that because he's so much because he's so much shorter, you have to come up with a different style of offense. And the Browns they need to get established before having before implementing a system like that. And so I feel like when you look at the tape, you see that Sam Darnold has the the NFL intangibles, where he's a strong pocket passer. He moves well with his feet. And he's big come, enough. And he's big enough. He can come out of the pocket and still give you a pretty accurate throw. And he has the wheels to get you that first down if if everything's locked up. He has the wheels to get you that first down. Um, one of the biggest things he just needs to work on is like holding on to the ball because if if he starts feeling pressure, he kind of just he because his eyes are always still looking downfield to make the throw. Sometimes he doesn't protect the ball because he's so focused on trying to make the pass, and that can really hurt him because guys like. You get any good defensive end in the NFL, they're taught come after the ball and strip. Yeah. And come after the ball and strip. And if he doesn't protect that ball, but that's the thing. If that's his worst, if that's his worst flaw, I feel like the Browns are in a pretty good spot. Baker Mayfield, I feel like presents a lot more serious flaws. And I and once again, I go back to I feel like you have to design a specific offense around him. And I the, I mean, the Browns still need to be established before creating a different style of offense for a quarterback. So I say Sam okay. Darnold. I would yeah. say no too. Just because, like, I mean, the best quarterback in the in the college isn't always, like, 
translate to the NFL. You know, oh, even yeah. someone who's like who's going to translate better to the NFL game, even if it's his stats aren't that good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, wishful thinking as a Jets fan makes me want them to take Mayfield or Rosen, mm-hmm. um, but they 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 would be smart to take Darnold in the first because he. You know, he just, like you said, I mean, he's got everything it takes. Yeah, I can tell you what I would do is if I was if I was playing Madden right now and I was in the Browns position, I would take Saquon Barkley one and literally. But I, that's be, that's mainly because I don't know. I don't know really who's going to stand out more from from the quarterbacks that are there. If the Browns know which one's the one that they want and they want them, they need to get them at one. But in my opinion, pick Barkley at one and then just wait for at, wait for four or Pick your quarterback at one and maybe even trade for back and just accumulate a, a, maybe two more first round picks. You know what I mean? Like, so, I'm always down yeah, to trade right. down. You think no they go BPA? You think yeah, they go BPA? No one's going to give up a second round. No one's going to give up a second pick in the draft to the team that just chose first. I'm, d- I'm just I saying. Mean, they know. <laughs> it's, not a, it's not out of the question because, you know, they know if they take Barkley at one that they're going to get Rosen. Mayfield or Darnold at four, so I mean it, it's not a terrible strategy if they think if That's they think that Barkley if they think Barkley is the real deal they could take him at one but I see them taking a quarterback instead. Yeah, either way, LeBron's gonna fuck it up, guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about the second pick for the Giants because uh, me, me and Reggie started going after this a little bit before the podcast started, <laughs> and I don't know. I, 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 he brought up a good point, but I still, I personally, I mean, from what I've been seeing on mock drafts, everyone's thinking Saquon Barkley. I think it has to be Barkley. It has to be. Well, yeah, but so here's the problem that I have with some teams. It's that whenever you have a high-profile pick and you, it, 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 for the Giants, it's hard at the end of in high, or I guess in the future, it's kind of hard for the Giants to say, yeah, they pass up on Saquon Barkley. But you also got to look at the future of your team. Eli Manning has been on a decline for the past two years, and on top of that, we he he started. I mean, granted, the, they kind of had a lot of losses last year, especially Dude, they had a ton of injuries, but. I feel like you got to start. Eli Manning's at that point in his career where he can still give you some years, but you got to start looking forward. Um, with that being said, I, I want to see the Giants take a quarterback and maybe maybe take someone like Rosen. Um, maybe take someone like Rosen who has been he's been sliding from all the mock drafts I've been seeing. Rosen has been sliding up and down out of the um, out of the top ten, and so clearly people are seeing that Rosen. The, all the quarterbacks, Rosen is probably the the least of the top four. I, I say you probably take someone like him and you develop him, especially when he was at a smaller school like Wyoming where he didn't see a whole lot of competition. I feel like the the NFL may may be a bit, I'm not going to say maybe a bit much for him, but it would definitely be a faster speed. I mean, it's going to be faster speed for any quarterback coming out of college, but especially if you were going to school where you didn't play a whole lot of um, tough teams. I don't like them taking Saquon Barkley because even though they have what do they have like Rainey there right now? I mean, that's the, still yeah. But really the Giants good. haven't had a good running back like ever, like in like fifteen years. They haven't had anyone since, since like Tiki Barber. Like they've yeah. never had a running game. That's all they've they've they've, they've been like a running game away like ten years in a row. Like, and they could always draft the quarterback next year. Like, there's going to be another guy who's going to be like the number one recruit. Blah 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 next year. And they're still going to have Eli play this year, even if they take a quarterback. Eli's still going to play the whole and, year. And so. that was a point that you made earlier. To kind of agree with it's that I mean, yeah, they do have next year, and so and and then at that point they could be kicking themselves, especially if Saquon Barkley has a breakout year. Yeah, and I'm sure he will. So, he's going to kill it. He's a he's a monster. And yeah. there's not there's no guarantee there's going to be a running back like that in the next year's draft. And, and you're going to be picking number two. You know, funny we're talking about this because right now I'm on, I'm doing this off I'm doing the podcast off of my phone and I just got an ESPN update and it said Odell Beckham Jr. Um, he leaked who the Giants are taking number two overall and so far on all of them they're seeing Saquon Barkley. I have a feeling that they're, they're just going to go with Barkley. They yeah, should. So they I, should. I agree with, with Reggie. Mm-hmm. I've been kind of like Giants adjacent my whole life. <laughs> growing up. And and I agree they haven't had a great running back since Tiki Barber. Mm-hmm. And I think that one of their downfalls has been that 
you know, the defenses that they face know, okay, well, we cover Odell, we're pretty much good because their running game isn't that exactly. great. Exactly. They've never and so, and so I think if Barkley's there, they got to take him. And then they can take a late-round quarterback later on, or they can draft one next year. I, I, I agree. If Barkley's there, they take him. So if, uh, they take, if the Browns take Barkley at one, then I think that they'll grab Darnold or Rosen personally. Yeah, I guess. Which is gone, you might as well take a quarterback at that point. Which, unfortunately, that would really suck because I would hate to see a strong talent like like um, Mayfield or Donald and go and be a backup. I mean, granted, they're going to be a backup to a two-time Super Bowl winning um, quarterback. I mean, that's pretty right. solid. But I feel like they they both have the potential to be starting on to be starting on the first um, first I, week, but I know. agree, I agree, and that's and that's like the trend now too. All these rookies are the quarterbacks are playing like uh, Dak and Deshaun Watson. Like they're putting these guys in quick. So if you like, you might as well not even draft a quarterback because you're not going to play him if you have Eli this year. Actually, that brings up a good point because then also I think a problem that we also see, and this could be a whole nother talk for this, but I feel like sometimes that's how we see some rookie phenoms that are coming out of college phase out so quickly in the NFL because they're starting day one. Andrew Luck. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, dude, what the hell happened to Andrew Luck, dude? It's even, he's not even throwing the football yet. You hear about that? He's still not throwing the football. Yeah, all right. Let's he's talk about... Ireland somewhere. Let's talk about uh, number three since that's the one that I'm most interested in. Oh, there man. There we go. Look, so the, the Jets? Jets... The Jets grabbed Teddy Bridgewater on the offseason... <laughs> And they signed Josh McCown. And they were at number six before they traded up to number three. So they're they definitely taking quarterback. If you're going to trade yeah. up, you're taking the quarterback. Yeah. At, when they were at number six, I actually really liked Lamar Jackson for them at number six. Mm. But mm. Since, they, since they moved up to number three, I, I really think that they grabbed the, the third of Rosen, Darnold, or Mayfield. And I wouldn't be upset with any of them. I, personally, I like Darnold the most, and probably Mayfield the second most, and then Rosen third, only because he's got some injury concerns. So, are um, you gonna be upset if they draft Josh Allen? If they grab Jeff, Josh Allen, I'll be so fucking mad. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to bleep that. No, out, you're good, uh, dude. You can. Justin, yeah, you're good, man. Dude, I'll be so uh, mad. Yeah. So Wait, mad. Why? Just because he's not. Because, he's not. He's not look, out here, right? We already have two stupid. You know, we have we have two big quarterbacks that can throw the ball really far, and they're going to get dropped from the team this year. We need we need a guy who can sit in the pocket, make the smart read, throw it to our dudes, and <laughs> throw the ball to the guy. Hang on not here. throw it to the other team. That's <laughs> you know that's the it's been the the bane of the Jets organization for the last ten years has been. Their their quarterbacks throw so many interceptions, and I really like Mayfield's accuracy. I really like his uh, his ball security. He threw the least interceptions out of the the five of them. Um, Darnold also has really great ball security and accuracy. So either of those two, I, I'd be happy with. I see them grabbing Mayfield uh, with Darnold and Barkley being picked at one and two. Is it bad though? When I think of all, I can think about is. Butt fumble. That's the only thing I can do. It's so sad because, dude, San- Sanchez is a whole nother podcast topic. Oh, he was wow. good, wasn't he? What? How do, how do you go from, like, you know, two time AFC going to the AFC championship to, like, um, being a garbage quarterback? Or was he garbage you, all the time? Just how beat. do you go from two time AFC championship to the Cowboys? Like, yeah, all right, all right, what a all drop right. off. All right, here's my, here's my, here's my spark nest for that. The Jets had Terry Bradshaw, who was a GM previously, on as their head um, of uh, recruitment. And I, uh, I actually did not know Terry Bradshaw. Was so not Terry Bradshaw. It was another Bradshaw. Maybe not uh, Terry Bradshaw. A different Bradshaw. Another Bradshaw. old GM. An old GM <laughs> who was still their scouting guy. And when they had Mangini and they fucking they had Idzik. <laughs> They just, they let the team crumble. Man, she was trash. Old I think she's like the yeah. smartest dude in the world. They grabbed Tebow, and it's just, yeah, what it, was, it was a disaster. It was a disaster. They grabbed Plexico Burris. 
um, for Alan <laughs> Edwards. Yeah, it was a disaster. They had, you know, they really ruined Mark Sanchez, in my opinion. I think he could have been a decent uh, franchise quarterback. Yeah, he was good at that. Like, he wasn't yeah. bad for the Jets when they were winning. Like, And they, they beat the Patriots, didn't they? They beat the Pats and they beat yeah, the Colts. Dude. When yeah. they lost. You can do that. You're, you're not bad. They would have gone to the Super Bowl the year, but uh, they played the Steelers in the AFC Championship, but they yeah. came out really strong. <laughs> anyway, so, so number for the four. Jets, well, I was going to say, I wanted to comment on um, yeah, yeah, yeah. the Jets pick. So, so, yeah, the Jets suck. So, <laughs> <laughs> that's my analysis. So, so interesting, interesting situation here. You have Teddy Bridgewater already, and if you were to draft Baker Mayfield, what's one thing these two, what's one thing these two quarterbacks are? They both are mobile. Five minutes. I mean, they both are mobile, but they also can both stay in the pocket, which means that you can have Teddy Bridgewater be your starting quarterback, and your offense doesn't stall if Teddy Bridgewater ends up sucking and you have to bring in Baker Mayfield. It doesn't stall because you have two athletic quarterbacks. Both of them know how to stay in a pocket. And, 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 and then going back to Baker Mayfield, I mean, the accuracy, I feel like that's something that is huge that sets him apart from even, like, people have been bold enough to compare him to Johnny Manziel. Johnny Manziel was not a... I mean, I see let's, it. Let's, let's be honest. crazy, though. Johnny Manziel, well, I mean, outside of, outside of, like, the behavioral issues and everything with Johnny Manziel, Johnny Manziel would feel a tad bit of pressure and he would take off running. Way. He trusts yeah. his legs more than his arms. Baker Mayfield trusts his arm more than his legs. And that's true. And the thing is, if you're going to redesign, I don't, I don't even want to say redesign, but if you're going to tweak your offense because you're going to have a short quarterback back there, um, kind of doing like a whole Russell Wilson Seahawks um, type of deal, I mean, my, my biggest thing is, wouldn't you want at least two quarterbacks in your system that can, wouldn't you want two quarterbacks that can run the same system that way, it's almost like you don't have to play with two different playbooks for different quarterbacks. You can play with one playbook with both quarterbacks on the same page. And, I mean, granted, I mean, you don't want to keep running Teddy Bridgewater because, I mean, he, he kind of has a bad knee as it is. But what I'm saying, though, is that you can still the, – the same plays that you would have for Teddy Bridgewater and you would want to use a pocket for it. You can have Baker Mayfield do that, or you can have them doing rollouts, run pass options, um, different things to basically get get them to use their their legs because let's be honest, those two. I mean, Baker Mayfield is going to be a quarterback just because he's so short. He has to get out of the pocket, right? Yeah, that's true. And or they need blocking like, schemes to match his to match right, his right. And I feel like if you does if you design an offense where if where Teddy Bridgewater can run that, and then you have Baker Mayfield come in, you don't lose a step, and that's huge. Yo, JJ, if the if the first two picks are quarterbacks, do you want do you want the Jets to take Saquon? Oh, dude, that's such a tough decision. Thank Honestly, you. like I don't think that you trade up to grab a, a running back. Yeah, but they probably wouldn't expect that to happen, though. You know. No, it's true. It's re- that's a really tough situation. I, I say you I take honestly, them. like you take, but they t- they traded up to take a quarterback. It honestly, I think it would depend on which quarterback. I, I honestly think it would depend on which quarterbacks they take. Who is left? Let's say they take. It's uh, the guy from USC goes one, then uh, uh, Josh Rosen goes two. Uh, I would take Mayfield. You got to take Mayfield over Barkley. Yeah, I think yeah. So. I don't know, man. That's a we big need, question mark. We need a quarterback. We need a quarterback. Yeah, they just so didn't bad. they just sign like five <laughs> running backs? If you, you look at their it. running backs right now, it's like all it's they're all like notable fantasy football <laughs> running backs for like the past two years. There's like five fantasy like people were on they were on somebody's fantasy football team in the last few years. Yeah, if you ask, say if Barkley's still there, you if if Barkley's still there. I mean, well, if 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 um, Donald, Donald, wow, Donald, and well, no, Mayfield's not going to be. Yeah, I say you take Mayfield. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. Like they, but you know, McCagnan has done BPA the last few drafts, so maybe they do take Barkley because he's the best pick available. Um, I I don't know. That's tough. That'd be a great Matt Forte replacement. I mean, granted, I know Matt Forte wasn't putting up ridiculous numbers for you guys, but he was still some well, consistency. That, w- yeah, it's a good team. Who's the running back on the Jets right now? Uh, they got. Uh, they just grabbed Crowell from the Browns. They've He's got. They've, <laughs> they've got uh, Bilal Powell and Elijah McGuire and Thomas yeah, Rawls. 
and Rawls. And Rawls. Yeah, you guys could definitely use some. You guys, you guys need a running back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hands down. All right, so let's go to four. Let's see what the Browns pick in the second. The second pick oh, of their, uh, So draft. what did what did we what did we what did we just what, we gave them a quarterback pick one? Is that what we did? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Is so that what's happening? Said, listen, well, we, I said, said, we said both. We said either. Listen, I say you make the Browns. You make it real easy. Simple and fail proof for the Browns. Give them another quarterback, all right? <laughs> yeah. Give them another quarterback. It's fail proof. They cannot fail if they take another quarterback. All right. Well, here's my thing. Get rid of Kaiser. He's garbage. If they, take a, garbage. if they take a quarterback at one, Barkley's going at two. So I have them taking Chubb at four. Ooh, that's actually a good idea. And I was just kidding about the I was just kidding about the quarterback. If they do that, they would that would be super stupid. But taking Chubb. Oh wait, wait, wait. Which Chubb? Uh, defensive end yeah. Chubb. Oh, okay. I thought you were saying Nick Chubb. I was like, that's interesting. Yeah, no. That was, the, I that mean, was... other Chubb is also good. But yeah, I think but, that... yeah, he's definitely not top ten worthy. Though I will say that. Nah. Yeah, not many people in but... the top ten have a Chubb for Chubb. If you know what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, I think a lot of these teams, like if they need a quarterback, they'll take one, even if he's not that good, just because they need a quarterback. I think it's so dumb. Like, it's you might so as well good. wait till next year or something to get someone that's actually good. Yeah. I'm, so I'm the telling, thing I like about yeah. that Chubb pick is that you now have Miles Garrett on one side, um, yeah. Chubb on the other. That could make your defense a little. That can make your defense pretty. Scary. At least, at least your run. I would say your pass rush scary, and hopefully your run stop, but. Both of them are kind of known for being good pass rushers. But that would at least help the tweak of your defense a little bit. If you ask me, though, I mean, I don't, there's no way that the Browns would. But if they can do something to beef up that linebacker, that linebacking or secondary core, that would be a pretty nice pick. But obviously, there's no one that would be – there's no one in this draft worthy enough to be that high of a pick. Well, unless it's Derwin James, but we want him in Tampa, so we don't talk about that. Until, <laughs> yeah. we, we won't talk about that until. So yeah, I say Chubb. I say Chubb's a great idea. Miles Garrett on one side, Chubb on the other. That that gives them at least. It makes it at least somewhat more stable, which hopefully that will kind of help out the defense. Which I think the Browns. Yeah, out. I think the Browns are going to do that. They're going to take a quarterback one, and then. Let's take Chubb at four. I'll say, right. I'll say this. There? I just want to put my thing in. If the Browns take a quarterback number one, they're going to trade the – and Saquon Barkley is not there at four, which I, I, don't, I don't think he will be. I think they trade back. I think they really? take – I, huh? I think they trade back with the fourth pick. <laughs> you said, wait, wait, go. Who, do, who do you think trades up then? Uh, Buffalo. The Bills? Oh, yeah, I, had I, the, I had the Bills and the Cards looking to trade up for a quarterback. Yeah, I think Buffalo would. I think Buffalo would you trade up and well. just take get, what's left. You get a lot of bang for your buck. Those four, that trade fourth overall. You probably get like a first, a second, maybe a third. Well, the the, the Buffalo Bills have two first round picks uh, in this draft. Yeah. They have a, they have twelve, and I think they have like twenty something or no twenty two. Twenty two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. That would be a good, a smart move by the Browns. Let the Bills pay them a, a ransom to get up there for a quarterback and. You know, sit back there at number twelve and grab. Uh, they would pretty much get their pick of defensive player. Yeah, or that'd be offensive fine. Player really at twelve. Hmm. Anyhow, yeah. these drafts are so long; they take forever. Like pick yeah. nineteen is gonna be like four hours from now. Yeah, yeah we can, we can just I think run. We back. should go to maybe like six or seven, and then or maybe up to ten. Yeah, we can go. Where's we'll go it? through to the Bucks. We'll go through to the Bucks, and then we'll. Uh, well, we can just do it real quick. I, I don't think anybody really cares who the Broncos pick, to be completely honest. But if you just want to get starting already, it's eight oh three. Yeah, close. that's what I'm saying. So oh, let's yeah. just let's just wrap it up. Let's do let's do the uh, Bucks. Like uh, uh, Jason, who who would you you? Oh, I guess you already said you want Derwin James, and apparently the... in Derwin James we trust. We need a ball, <laughs> we need a ball hawking, hard hitting safety. Who is not afraid? Who is NFL ready? I'm telling you, this guy has been NFL ready since his junior year. But because he got hurt, he had to sit out and come back his senior year. He was the best p- player in college football all the way up to like the last few weeks. He started dropping off, but that's also you can't really blame him. We kind of lost our starting quarterback week one. So, I mean, if you ask me, I think Duran James. He's he's got to be one of the most um, 
he's got to be one of the most NFL ready safeties. And actually, he is the top NFL uh, mm. ready safety in the draft. We just need someone who you can at least, I, I wouldn't even say build a defense around, but you need a tone setter on your defense. I believe he can come in, he can be a tone setter. And plus, what is the, what do the Bucks pride themselves on, even though we've kind of sucked at it a few years? We pride Tone ourselves takes. on defense. No, we pride ourselves on defense. <laughs> defense first, then we take care of the offense. Last offseason, we took care of our offense. So you know what? This year, okay, we, we bring on, we still need to take care of our offense because they've proven that it wasn't good enough. But we, I mean, when you got a hometown, when you got a hometown guy, you can't pass him up, especially when he's the number one safety in the draft. When you go with Duran James, there's no if, ands, or buts about it. And if any other team steals him before, I will be pissed. And <laughs> any fan of the of the Bills, Broncos, Browns, Jets, Just love New York, Derwin James. Browns, y'all can fight me because that is how badly I will. <laughs> All right. I, uh, I had the Bucks taking a defensive back. I had them taking. He's saying this kid's thinking these to go the Bucks. I like number seven. The Bucks are number seven, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's early. I well, I hope the Cowboys. I hope Derwin James. I hope oh, someone please. leaks something on Twitter oh, about please. his no, smoking st- marijuana. Why? He drops down to number nineteen. <laughs> Cowboys pick him up. Oh please! All right. here first. There you go. <laughs> I think. I think the. First. I think the Cowboys take a wide receiver personally. I'm, yeah. I have some. I, I have some picks of Derwin James given me by a source. I'm gonna leak him real quick. Oh I'm right. Sure. Stop, stop. Turn up. Turn up. Actually, right. yeah, I wanted to was pick next. Well, okay, I'm just going to say, as a Packers fan, if we don't pick the best defensive back available, I'm going to vomit. Packers going to take a quarterback because they hate Aaron Rodgers. No, no, we, no listen. You, no, you, you, we're going to take a defensive player. We got Aaron Rodgers, and like we got Hunley the – held it down. We already have I the quarterback of the future, and it's not Brett Hundley anymore. We traded for Deshaun Kaiser. That dude is a legend. Oh, that's, oh, that's right. Took the same thing. No, no. Deshaun Kaiser's actually played in a game and and played well. Brett Hundley, I don't know. Brett Hundley, we gave him too much credit, but uh, we don't. I'm, we're obviously not going to pick a backup quarterback in round one when we have Aaron Rodgers, so we'll be fine. We just need defensive backs. We literally, it's like a scab crew out there. We're bringing back Tremont Williams. He's like 55. Oh my goodness, Are you serious? Yeah, Tremont Williams is back. We're bringing. You guys should pick up. You guys should pick up Colin Kaepernick. No, we, at this rate, we should pick up Charles Woodson again. See if he wants to play again. <laughs> Actually, what I was gonna tell you, up the safety. Oh, Malu. Yeah. <laughs> he'll come back. Let's do this. If you guys Malu was like three hundred pounds his last year. Uh, Dude, if if you guys get a safety, you're just trying to you're just trying to replace that Charles Woodson figure back there, and I don't think that's. We have happen. two good safeties. We got. Hell no. We got Ha Ha Clinton Dix, which is my favorite name, and <laughs> and we got. Well, I don't know. If, actually, I think did we lose Morgan Burnett? We might not have him anymore. So yeah, we probably, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be mad with a safety, but anybody defensive back corner or safety, I don't care. Just, we need people back. Tell, there. Yeah. I'll give that to you. Ha ha. She has been a pretty, pretty Pro solid bowler. hard hitter. Yeah. He's good. Jason Witten is so swaggy on that stage right now, dude. Oh my I'm so God. hyped. This draft is in Dallas. All right. We got to get out of oh here before gosh. we watch too much of this draft. Yeah, let's so, get out of here. Uh, anyway, yeah. so you, we think Cowboys uh, probably need to pick a wide receiver because they got rid of Dez. Yeah, actually, I hope yeah. I think, uh, the, the guy from uh, Bama, he's fucking nasty. Ridley? Ridley? He's not gonna... Dude, he's, he's sick. You think he'll fall that far? Uh, I don't know. I really haven't been looking, but that'd be nice. I say, I say Cortland Sutton, the receiver at SMU. Big Is guy. Big guy, he's powerful, and he's got some hands. This, guy's, this guy has some, a pair of one-handed catches that makes Dez look soft. But the Cowboys like, just signed Alan Hearns. We signed some other dude. We still got Beasley and all these other dudes. So we, I mean, we have a, a lot of you have, receivers. You have, not, get a lot of tiny guys, num- but you have number no big... one amazing. Yeah, not like a lot of West Walker, Wes Walker-esque figures. Yeah, yeah. So, but that's what I mean. If, even with De- with Dez last year, like he would not, he was never open. Like in every pass that Dak threw to him, like it was just, it was just a bad connection. Well, you got to be good at football to get open. I mean, he's not good anymore. He's got to get open. How about that? Yeah. Yeah, he wasn't like he wasn't open. He's not good. Like he, I'm, I'm kind, I'm glad they got rid of him because he really wasn't good the last three years. Really. Three. Yeah. Wow. All right. <laughs> All right, friends. We'll see how this pans out. Yeah. Let's. Uh, I'm gonna right, post guys. this immediately. I know it'll be in the draft. So if anybody wants to listen to it, I mean, it, it might be a little late, but it's something. At least we're, at least we're on record with what we have to say, and we can always go back to it and be like, look, we said this. It wasn't gonna happen. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, we'll Don't come. Don't forget in Derwin James. 
Trust. All right. I think the next There's podcast, the, the coins, the next, coins. yeah, the next, <laughs> the next podcast we wind up doing will probably be somewhere along the lines of like an Infinity War recap. It'll probably happen this weekend because yep. Infinity War comes out tomorrow. It's gonna be wild. So it's gonna be dope. Yeah. So we'll, be, I'm so excited. Peace out, Chunkers. Yeah, we'll be back right, soon. Yes. So catch you later. Peace. Yeah.